Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. So this is the first of our 12 days of Christmas special series leading up obviously to Christmas. And we're gonna have a video each day that has 10 games on it and a different theme. I'm not gonna lie, I totally saw this idea on Gamer Ranks and thought, yeah, that looks awesome. Let's do the Nintendo Switch version. And uh, yeah, what do you think, what is it, Glenn? Yeah, so what we're gonna do then, we're gonna look at 10 games that are better than AAA games. So 10 indie games that almost do it better than some of the big boys do it. Exactly right. So without further ado, what are 10 games that are as good as AAA? Let's find out. All right, first up then we've got Eastwood. Now Eastwood was one that I reviewed reasonably re recently. I think it was back in September. And essentially this was a top-down classic style action RPG. Would you say this was in a similar vein to like Zelda, Glenn? It's got that, that kind of uh, feel to it, hasn't it? It's got a Zelda vibe to it. Um, I haven't played this one, Mark. I've got this, it's winging its way to me from uh, Play Asia as we speak, the physical version. So you're going to have to take the lead on this. But it was very much story driven, is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you play as John and his adopted daughter, Sam. Um, and yeah, it was, you basically leave this mining complex. You start out a bit, it's like a dictatorship. You're not really sure why you're there, but you just work your days out in the mines. And then eventually you escape. And start to work your way across the country but before you were kind of told that you couldn't go outside because it was like polluted but okay, that turns right. out to be bogus right okay okay yeah it's pretty cool it's it's a nice little storyline there are some reasons that you don't want to be outside but i kind of don't want to spoil it in case you know someone picks it up what does it play like gameplay wise uh it does play a lot like a uh, old school zelda you've got your action combat that's that's real time there's no random battles or any of that noise. Um, you get different weapons. You've got a frying pan as your main weapon. You get a flamethrower. Um, it's, it's simplistic combat, but it, it's good. It's, I think I said this to you at the time, and you might have said something similar, but it's one of those games. It doesn't do... It's not, like, exceptional, but it does everything really, really well. So, yeah, I can't remember. I got it in the 90s, didn't it? I gave it in the 90s. It scored very well. I got, yeah, it was, it was bang up there when it was, like, 93, maybe, maybe even higher than that. It was... It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be on Game of the Year list for sure, isn't it? Let's be, let's be honest. Yeah, definitely. It's a shame, really. I should have picked your brain before doing the review because you have knowledge of classics. And everyone was talking about Earthbound. Yeah. Have you played I that think, one? I, yeah, I've played Earthbound. I mean, the thing with Earthbound was traditional in a lot of ways, but what it did differently for the time, maybe not so much obviously now, but um, it took that classic kind of turn-based RPG style but put it in an urban setting. So you mentioned right. things like frying pans and stuff as weapons. You know, that kind of did that with baseball bats and things. Yes. And it, it just hadn't been done very much back then. Do you know what I mean? So not maybe not as big a, uh, big a deal these days, but back then it was just quite refreshing. Yeah. No, it's an absolutely brilliant game. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it's from Chucklefish as well, who just tend to make great games on Switch. Yeah, yeah. All right, next, let's talk about um, Bug Fables. It's going to be the next one. Ah. Uh, the reason we've picked this, I say better than AAA, that's maybe unfair, but it has taken the formula for Paper Mario, Nintendo's mm -hmm. own Paper Mario, and it's kind of brought it back to its roots. Paper Mario has gone off in a different direction over the years. Bug Fables took that classic formula, the one that people had been wanting, if you know what I mean, yeah. and, and made its own game out of it. And it's, it's a, a really... Lovely art style, hand-drawn, nice and colourful. Uh, quite charming characters as well as you go off on your adventure. It's got your turn-based combat, but with those action buttons as well, you know, so if you press a button at a certain point, you can take less damage or you can deal more damage, you know? Yeah. And each of your three main characters has got particular skills. So it's just classic Paper Mario. I'm going to upset some people and say that I never played the original Paper Mario. Yeah, no, I know you didn't. I, you know, we've spoken about that before. So... <laughs> I mean, it is, it's, it's just it's classic turn-based RPG, apart from the fact, obviously, like I say, it has got those action buttons where you can, you know, deal more damage. But it's, it's, it's a lot of it's about the charm and the humour, you know? That's just something that, yeah. that, 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 that it, the games did very well back in the day. Not to say they don't do them so well now. Mm. And Bug Fables brought that back, and there was a, a whole audience that were, you know, desperate for it, and, and it definitely uh, filled that void, you know? Hmm. So why do you think it's better than the recent Paper Mario that was released on Switch? Um, I would say yes. As much as I did like the new Paper Mario, the, the new battle mechanic they brought in got very repetitive. They, Nintendo tried to reinvent the wheel too often for my liking <laughs> sometimes, you know. 
and if, if, it ain't, if it ain't broke don't fix it is the old adage isn't it you know what I mean and this is this is basically that this is them saying look it wasn't broke so we're not going to fix it <laughs> if that makes <laughs> sense <laughs> <laughs> exactly right but it's worth playing definitely very good game nice alright well what have we got next on the list uh, this is one of your recent reviews as it goes we've got Demon Turf oh yeah 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 that was from Fabraz wasn't it yeah so this is would it be fair to say a 3D platformer but it almost has yeah. like a 2D aesthetic is that right yeah yeah that is yeah it uses the, not everyone really liked that aesthetic and um, I think the reason that people weren't so keen on it or some people you know what the comments are like yeah, um, yeah. some people didn't like the animations are a little bit intentionally low frame rate if that makes right. sense yeah so the movements aren't overly smooth on the character and that can be a bit distracting against like the smooth 30 or depending on what platform you're on 60 fps background but i didn't mind it i thought it was nice it was obviously a choice they'd made uh, and i thought it worked really well um but the biggest thing about it was and it was something we were talking about mario odyssey is it doesn't go over the top so each stage you've got your three secret things to find yeah, you haven't yeah. got like 103 you know yeah yeah and that was my biggest gripe with odyssey you know as, as good as it is and it is very good let's be fair mm. it just it was a bit of overkill wasn't it you know yeah it really was yeah like was it the was it the moons the moons in that game wasn't it yeah uh, but you found them absolutely everywhere yeah it was literally like do your shoelaces up get a moon <laughs> wasn't it it was just like <laughs> It was a bit much, wasn't it? <laughs> exactly right. But what I really liked about this as well is it kind of embraces the more modern speedrunning aspect. So right. every stage, yeah, you're like racing against people around the world. Um, it just, I don't know, I, I'm quite competitive, you know that. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's just a nice little element to add in. Um, and they've designed the stages so that you can perform them better, if that makes sense. So didn't it do the um, the checkpoint system as well, where you could lay the flags down as you wanted? Yeah, how strange is that? I mean, has that been done in any other games, probably, that I don't know about? Not that I can think of, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I like that idea, because that's one of the biggest bugbears, I reckon, in gaming, isn't mm. it? Che in infrequent checkpoints, or, or maybe sometimes too frequent checkpoints that make a game too easy. To, so to be able to lay them as you see fit. And I think you had like a, a finite amount per level, is that right? That's right, and you can upgrade it and get an extra one, but it's oh, nice. nice. Yeah, it's a good idea, really good idea. Right, the next one then, I mean, this one needs no introduction, really. This is uh, this is one I'm sure everyone will be aware of, and this is Hades. Ah. So Hades, obviously, is a, is a roguelite, and uh, is a very very good one, to be fair, where mm -hmm. you go on your runs, and obviously you, you, you uh, acquire new weapons, I, what I liked about Hades, well, there's lots of things I liked about Hades, but the thing I, that stuck out for me the most in a sea of roguelites these days was just how much progress you make between runs. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, there are so many ways that you can acquire new skills in between runs and, and the, the, the items that you find and what have you. It made it feel rewarding as you went along, which is sometimes where roguelites can let themselves down a bit. Yeah, and I think it was one of the first to actually do story properly, or at least yeah. to a such a good extent. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll make you right. Yeah, there's a really good article, actually, with a guy that did the scripting for the game. Right. And uh, literally, every time you play for something like the first 100 runs, there's a change in terms of script based on the choices you've made. Oh, well. <laughs> How cool is that? That's very cool. And the fact that it is based on Greek mythology as well. Mm-hmm. You know, like, so... It, to have such a, a strong story, but also to intertwine it in, into something that's you know so so deep and and you know has so much uh, to it already, it was really yeah. interesting, wasn't it? To interact with characters that you know if if you if you're into mythology or just even if if you have a passing knowledge of it from school or whatever, just to see the names and hear of people that you think oh yeah I remember that myth or I remember that, <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Definitely, and you could kind of see the evolution of Supergiant Games, um, Bastion the Transistor, yeah, yeah. kind of built that style up didn't they the storytelling style with the narration yeah yeah definitely definitely and this is just like next level I liked what I liked about them or not the most but I liked how um, uh, is it Poseidon it is Poseidon is it is your, is your dad is it Zeus is it Zeus I can't remember now uh, no his father um, I know his daddy's Hades his father's Hades his, his daddy's father's Hades, Hades yeah. <laughs> yeah bloody hell it's like <laughs> <laughs> Is it Pegasus? <laughs> oh, mate. What are we doing? You're not going to live that one now. 
Well, anyway, what I was going to say about you know Hades, obviously, <laughs> is that when you when you failed a run, he kind of took the pee a little bit, didn't he? He just had a little little dig at you every time that you came back and had to start again. Yeah, I quite like that. I just felt that was quite a good way of of, of restarting, you know. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. All right, let's move on from Hades before we forget anything else bloody obvious about it. His name was Zagreus, by the way, just in case you forgot. Just just in case, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to another one. and let's, let's do Ultra Age. Let's talk about Ultra Age. Okay. So Ultra Age um, is a game that looked lovely, didn't it? It definitely caught my eye when I did the upcoming, I remember, when it released. And it had that, yeah. for me, is, is the best way of doing like a dystopian future where you have... The, the plants have overgrown and you can kind of see the remnants of buildings do you know what I mean had that yes. look to it and you had like the mechanical aspect of it with the with the growth of the, the trees and whatnot. it really looked interesting and it played very well as well didn't it it did it was really smooth it, to be honest it looks very and I should have mentioned this in the review it's very Final Fantasy right um, in terms of that look it, it really does look like that yeah. but then it has kind of your Bayonetta slash um, Devil May Cry style combat yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was decent. I liked the way you could switch the weapons and they affected different creatures. Yeah, that was actually that was quite an interesting concept. Rather than just going through with one weapon and just taking down everything, you did have to give a bit more thought into the, the combat in that respect, didn't you, in terms of your armoury? Yes, yeah. They, they, they did break the, the golden rule, though. Go on. Like, at the end of the game, they literally just recycle every boss you fought. Oh, no, that's not oh. good. Oh, it was so annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not cool. That's not cool. Do you know the, the biggest offender for that? Nothing to do with this list. This is a proper yeah. tangent. But um, Bravely Default, the first Bravely Default on the 3DS. You basically, yeah. um, spoilers, by the way, if anyone's like sitting there, I'm going to play Bravely Default tomorrow. Just you know, skip on a bit. But um, you did the whole thing. You beat all the bosses or whatever. And then you had to basically go back to the start and do it again. No. Oh, and I remember playing it. And I, I love that game, don't get me wrong. But I was like, oh, my word, they're not going to do this, are they? And they did, you know? <laughs> there is, isn't there? There's that moment of, oh, no, they didn't. Yeah, they did. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. But no, that's yeah. um, moving back to Ultra Age, it's, it's a very good example of the hack and slash genre. You know, there are a few big hitters on the Switch in that respect. You mentioned a couple there. Bayonetta, obviously, is a new one coming at some point. You've got things mm -hmm. like Astral Chain. Um, yeah bit of an overlooked game in some respects maybe um, some might argue you've got things like the Ninja Gaiden trilogy on the Switch now as well so this it's nice to see an in indie team a small indie team at that as well do it and do yeah. it well do you know what yeah I think unless I'm mistaken that this is the Unreal Engine 4 I think right. so yeah. and it this is where again this works I hope it is otherwise I'm like an idiot I'm pretty sure it is <laughs> um, this is the whole idea of this video you look yeah. at the studios that have used that engine and failed miserably. Yeah, GTA, yeah. yeah, like that should have been 30 FPS, but this team managed to make bigger spaces, uh, lots of action on the screen, and, and it was just buttery. So yeah. you know, I'm a massive nerd when it comes to stuff like that. So I was, yep. <laughs> I'm well impressed with that. <laughs> I'm well impressed with that. Good stuff. Right, next game. Then we're going to move on. We're going to talk uh, another classic, really, that doesn't need an introduction. And that's Cuphead. Yeah. So. Cuphead uh, is a game that began life uh, on the Xbox, didn't it? Or, you know, um, Microsoft's uh, property. It was one of those when Nintendo and Microsoft had this partnership that was uh, mentioned, made its way over to the Switch. And it's, it's a boss rush game, really, isn't it? I suppose it's the best way to describe it, with mm -hmm. some elements of run and gun in there as well. And it's just excruciatingly difficult, <laughs> but incredibly rewarding at the same time, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's a perfect description. <laughs> it's one of those games that you, you can't help but hate at times, but you also <laughs> secretly love it, you know? <laughs> it really is. Is it is it masochism? Is that the word? Yeah, yeah. You, you have to be a masochist to play it, that's for sure. <laughs> it's, it's literally volunteering your face to be punched. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. But, I mean, it's, it has the, um, like the 1920s slash 1930s uh, animation style, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, you the told me about that. Yeah, yeah. Or well, you, you had like Fleischer Studios back then. Walt Disney, you know, in those days, obviously uh, used that style very heavily. And it looks beautiful. I mean, it looks mm -hmm. absolutely beautiful. It runs at 60 frames per second, but the backgrounds were actually animated at 24 frames per second or there or there, thereabouts, which is what movies are. Uh, That's render so that. cool, isn't it? Yeah, so it looked, if you watch it, like obviously when you're playing the game, you just don't, you can't. But 
<laughs> if you just stop and look at the backgrounds and then obviously the animation how smooth it is in front of it it's such a lovely juxtaposition you know it really does work very well and you have the the animation as i just said which looks wonderful but the music as well you know it, it's just it's so of its time or of the time it's trying to aspire towards in every way it's almost aesthetically a perfect game for what it wants yeah. to be you know yeah i remember i was over your house when you were you'd reviewed this and you were sort of yeah, sat trying yeah. to do the scores and you're like how can i not give this 20 out of 20 for yeah. visuals yeah <laughs> I, I think i did give it 20 out of 20 for visuals I, I gave it 19 for music just because i felt the music didn't build to a crescendo as the boss battles came towards an end yes. they kind of just carried yeah. on which would have been perfect but that's that's such a minor gripe you know yeah yeah, performance-wise and everything else, it's perfect, isn't it? The performance was spot on. Um, the gameplay, obviously, we've mentioned the difficulty, but it is so incredibly rewarding, especially in two-player when you beat these bosses. And it has that kind of progress bar, doesn't it, of how you're getting on? Yes. So yeah, every time nice. you fail, yeah, you see how long, how, you know, how, how far into it you were. It just makes you want to try again, you know? It's Yeah, it's. I mean, it is one of those you just play and try and try again isn't it until you finally beat a boss and it's incredibly rewarding yeah yeah very much so it is i mean i you know me i i, I do have my <laughs> moments of rage when playing games <laughs> really I don't yeah well you know once or twice <laughs> i don't think i think other than football manager when i'm playing as spurs and getting trounced by some like league two team <laughs> in the cup i don't think i've ever sworn as much at a game as i did with cuphead it just <laughs> it, it enraged me at times but yeah. it did feel good as you as you moved on through, you know. Yeah, that's the difference between us two. I, I kind of like those moments, don't I? Yeah, you I do. like those you, horrible you, games. You are the masochist. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, I can't am. be doing with it. I play games to <laughs> to relax, not to be annoyed. But even uh, saying that, I still gave it ninety odd percent because for some reason it just does it so well that even if that's yeah. not your thing, you you kind of get hypnotised by it and you can't help but play more, you know. Definitely. Right, let's talk about a more recent one. Uh, very recent, actually. This was one of our most recent reviews. This is Death's Door. Yes. So this is from, or published by Devolver Digital, who just have such a good track record on the Switch, don't they? They, they seem to pick games that are just perfect. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, they've, they've got so, you know, so many heavy hitters that they've, they've published. Or not heavy hitters in the respect of knowing about them, but just being mm. top quality games, you know? Yes. Yeah, and... Again, my nerdiness, this and the last one we just spoke about are both Unity Engine. Unity Engine on Switch seems to have decent success. This looks and runs brilliantly. Yeah, um, yeah it's nice and it's, smooth, isn't it? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I've, I, it, do you know what? It's funny, people, to give them a bit of an insight into reviews and stuff, sometimes you're reviewing games and you're not enjoying it at all. Mm. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Yeah, all day long, yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes you get games that you absolutely love. Um, yeah. And it's so much nicer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. And this is a good example. I, I guess all the ones in this list are good examples. Well, I was going to review this, wasn't I? First of all, initially, you did it in yeah. the end. Because I just didn't have the time. I had, um, my son wasn't very well and I, I, just, I just didn't have the time to dedicate to a review. But I did play the first hour, maybe two hours of it. And it's not, yeah. I'll be honest, it's not really my game. You know, you're very much... I, I'm going to say Souls-like. I know it's not a Souls-like exactly, but it does have some mechanics that I it think does, I can get yeah. away with calling it. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah. Which is very much your sort of thing. But even as someone that's not hugely into that genre or that style of gaming, I was very much enjoying my time with it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a lovely game. You um, To give some context as to what it is, you, you move about the levels. It's not... They're not like labyrinth-like, are they? You, you, don't, you don't get massively lost, but there is a bit of exploration involved as you go around, isn't there? Um, yeah. As you try to find these souls, and you play as a little crow, and you need to, uh, <laughs> you'll come across, you know, bosses. You need to roll out of the way. You've got a, a melee weapon, and you've got a ranged weapon. And I can't quite remember the mechanic. You have to re remind me, Mark. But mm -hmm. isn't it something like every time you hit with your melee, then you charge up your range or something like that? So it's kind yeah. of a nice give and take, isn't it? Yeah, your ranged weapons are charged by melee, and yeah. and you're yeah. a little reaper. You're like a little grim reaper. You That's go around right, collecting yeah. the souls of these big beasties. Yeah, which is, it. it's just cool I liked it yeah. a lot um, and it's by a little small Manchester team as well which oh, I, nice. I always like it when we see these British studios yeah yeah um, definitely it's like the, like the good old days they used to be good you know when they used to do the programming in the bedrooms back in the 80s do you yeah. know what I mean it seems to be a bit of a resurgence going on at the minute 
Exactly right. And the two of them, um, I think one of them's the guy that did the music for Moonlighter. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. And you know how much I banged on about that. Like, yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the other one did like most of the programming, designing and writing of it. Right. Um, and it's just, yeah, everyone, everyone has given it decent reviews across the board. It's one of those games. Yeah, yeah. And it's got some nice humour in it, at least from what I saw. Nice, uh, yes. Some nice writing behind it, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got that. It has, I don't like saying British humour, because we'd never say that about ourselves, would we? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> but you know what I mean, and yeah, the audience probably know, knows yeah. what I mean. It's that quirky kind of off-the-wall humour. I mean, even yeah, the way the crow moves around, like... Yeah, it's quite dry, isn't it? Definitely. Quite a, quite a dry sense of humour, yeah, definitely. Nice, okay. So let's uh, let's have a chat about Dead Cells. Some of these games, you hear them now, and you think, oh, you know, that's, that is AAA, but... You have to remember when they came out, you know, they, they, they were these small games that became or have become over time huge hits. And I'd say Dead Cells is definitely one of those. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. And it's had so many updates since and it's, it's really uh, been refined. But even when it first came out, again, a roguelike game where you go on runs. But it's, the animation and how smooth it is and how, how fluid combat feels really yeah. set this apart from a lot of the other roguelites like me you, you know my favourite Mark is The Binding of Isaac I love that game mm -hmm. but that feels incredibly clunky when you compare it to something like <laughs> Dead Cells it's just a different sort of game isn't it the, the challenge is a different one but when you're playing Dead Cells man and you're rolling around and you're, you're jumping and you're climbing up onto roofs and you know uh, switching between weapons and trying different sets out and you, you might go with something like a parry attack with a sword and shield or, or try a a ranged weapon with a bow. There's just so much to it, isn't there, you know? Yes, yeah. And you're, you're right, what you were saying before about the updates since launch. Yeah. Like, this has had had the bad seed bundle, which I think I reviewed. Yeah. And then it had the Fatal Falls DLC, which I don't think I've even got around to playing yet. Or have I? Maybe it was, that was an, there was two that I reviewed, I can't remember. But then there's another one that's just come out. Um, yeah. What's it called? Queen in the Sea? But what's very cool is that it not only does it have, like, two new areas, which... I haven't even got to try out yet. Like, this is crazy. Um, but they've actually teamed up with a lot of little indie devs. So I believe there are characters from quite a few big, in air quotes, indie games in here now. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't realise. Yeah, I mean, I I, I know this... Uh, sorry, not characters, outfits. Right, so there's yeah, an outfit yeah. in here from T Curse of the Dead Gods. I know that much. <laughs> yep. Um, and a couple of others. And I just, I like that. I like that when they start to work together as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a few examples of that, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't there like a um, like an indie version of um, Smash Brothers that didn't do too yeah. well, but it, yeah. But from what I hear, um, it was quite poor. But I mean, the yeah. idea behind it was was a great one, wasn't it? It it's was. It's just a shame. It sounds like the execution was was bad. I think it was called Bounty Battle or something like that. Yeah, that sounds um, about right. Yeah, it was it was something along those lines. But yeah, um, unfortunately, it, it missed the mark completely. But yeah, it's, I do agree with you. I was having kind of taking these characters and starting to almost build or allow them to build their own legacy and, and do crossovers and stuff is, is really nice isn't it yeah it really is I think it's it's it's, it's kind of what we do with YouTube right you, you team up and do collaborations with other yeah, people that are of a similar similar yeah. size and interest yeah definitely definitely what we got is it um, Disco Elysium Disco Elysium is the next one yeah so this is quite an interesting one isn't it because it's I said, well, what would you class it as? What sort of game is it? Is it point and click? Is it? Is it an? Is it, well, it's definitely an RPG, but there's no combat, is there? There's no combat. It's all well, based on dialogue. It, well, it, it's such a. You're right. It's such a difficult one to define. There's yeah. almost like an underlying um, AD and D set, almost. You know, there's yeah. like dice rolls for everything. Well, I heard. I, I don't know the exact story. And you know, what it's like you kind of hear it through the grapevine. So, apologies if I don't get this exactly right, but. The people behind the game, their intention was to make a tabletop game. Okay. And they, they kind of were talking about their ideas and what they wanted to do. And they basically, in the end, said, we might as well make this into a video game. I'm sure there was a lot more to it than that. But the the, the intent to begin with was to make a tabletop game. And that definitely comes through, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That You're, you're spot on as well, because I remember reading that as well. Oh, um, nice. Okay. Yeah. It, they, they were inspired by things like Planescape Tournament. Right, Planescape yeah. Torment, sorry, can't speak. Torment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, how do you define it? I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's got some unusual mechanics that I 
I know don't gel with everyone. Like you can pick up different clothing items in the world, and then that right. changes your stats. But the problem is, like for example, say you had like a skill check for uh, I don't know. I'm just going to randomly say something here. Um, uh, endurance. Mm-hmm. And you've got a pair of boots that are endurance. You can't switch them while you're in that conversation. You have to like leave, put them on. And it's just a bit clunky. Right. Okay. So that was the only critique I've heard of it. I didn't really care, but there are just a few little quirky bits. What's very, very cool is you do the whole thing with your partner, Kitsuragi, who is an absolute G. If you play the game, <laughs> you'll know. Um, right. But there are, there are a few times where your main character is so off the wall. Like, for, <laughs> for example, there's a kid who you're trying to get information out. I don't think this is a big spoiler. I don't think so, because he's just there all the time. Right. And uh, at one point, you, uh, <laughs> you do something that upsets this kid, and you've got to try and get him back on your side. So you can, like, <laughs> you can, like offer to give him your gun and stuff, but, but it won't let you do it while your partner's there. So you have to wait till he's asleep and, like, creep out and go and do it then. <laughs> And this um, this particular version, the Switch version of it, which is I think it's called the Final Cut or something like that. Uh-huh. They, didn't they? They added like a bunch of um, voiceover, didn't they? Like a whole bunch of narrative to it compared to the original version of the game. Characters that didn't speak or a lot of the uh, the monologuing from the character himself was added into this version. And I can't remember the numbers now, but I remember reading it was a crazy amount of, of dialogue that's been added to this. Yeah, yeah it's like 1.2 million lines of dialogue. Jeez. Sorry, 1.2 million words of dialogue words and of 300 dialogue, yeah. different characters voice acted. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one to, to try if you want something a bit different, if you're into your RPGs, but I don't know, you're, you're, you're tired of fighting spiders and rats and whatnot. It's definitely something different to, to give a go to, isn't it? Oh, definitely. And the music as well. Do you remember the band British Sea Power? Yeah. Yeah, they do the they do the music. They're not called British Sea Power anymore. Right. Political. They're now called Sea Power. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just quite upsetting. Um, but yeah, they do all the music, and it's just so melancholy. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You should get this physical. Is it physically available? It's a collector's edition that's crazy expensive. Like you'd have to mortgage or remortgage your house to buy it. But I'm hoping at some point they'll bring a standard <laughs> edition out. <laughs> you should get it. Yeah. I'll keep me uh, keep my eyes out for it. See if they do a standard. <laughs> no, I was just going to say the last bit about it, which I thought was quite cool. Because I, I was looking, because the the main narrator is so good. I was trying to find out like which famous actor it was. Right. But actually, they rocked up to a London jazz bar and okay. just heard this guy playing, and were like, "You!" And they got him to do it, and it took him like nine months to record that extra audio. Really? Yeah, it's quality. See, that's what I need. I need someone to say that to me. You know, you know, we were talking about, uh, what was that game called? Rico London, weren't we? <laughs> where all the bloody villains sound like Dick Van Dyke. I was like, they need they need proper people. They need me. They need me to come and do some dialogue for them. <laughs> oh, man. Dick Van Dyke's like 90-odd years old. I know he is, yeah. I know. He, he was still dancing in the in the sequel to Mary Poppins, though. That was, that was him, proper dancing. Fair play to him. Yeah, good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from that weird tangent, we're going to move to the last game, which is Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Now, this um, came out, it was towards the back end of last year, I seem to remember, and we reviewed it. I think we gave it high 80s from what I remember, and it kind of caught people off guard a little bit, didn't it? It's a very interesting game in terms of the premise, because you you reminded me a lot of a game called uh, Muramasa, the Demon Blade, which was on the Wii and he's also won the uh, the Vita, I believe, which was another kind of hack and slash game. But then it had this this farming aspect to it that was just so unbelievably different. Because we're not talking story of seasons, harvest moon. <laughs> you literally grow rice, and you have to you painstakingly go through the process of growing it. Yeah. And what I really enjoyed about it is that the the better your rice, and like I say, you you went through the whole process. The, 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 the better the higher the quality your rice you then improved your stats and then you went out to fight and then you could uh, pick up items that you could then use to feed your team and also mm-hmm. use to uh, to create fertilizer to make your rice better and it was just this lovely cycle wasn't it that you you were constantly improving and everything felt relevant yeah without being um pretentious it's one of those for me it's one of those kind of art slash games where they're trying to go for the Japanese perfectionism. So there's yeah. that philosophy of perfectionism, and I love yeah. that. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a very good point, actually, that it was. Sakuna had kind of went through this journey as a character and she had to improve and she had to improve mm-hmm. the hard way. It was no easy fix. And you as the player had to do it too with her. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a really interesting idea and it, and it was very well executed, to be fair. There were some bits that maybe, you know, didn't quite hit the mark, but on mm-hmm. the whole, it was just such a unique experience. It looked lovely as well, didn't it? Really nice yeah. art style. And, and you it had went the different from a, seasons, didn't you? You had the different seasons and then you had the 2D uh, fighting sections and then you had like a 3D farm, didn't you? Hmm. Yeah. And, and this is just, two, again, it's just a two-man team. Yeah. And this is, I suppose, to bring it back to what you said uh, a bit earlier, this is what this video is about, isn't it? You know, you look at a game like this and if someone had said to you this was created by, whatever, Nintendo, Ubisoft, you yeah. wouldn't necessarily raise your eyebrows, would you? You know, you go, oh, no. nice, yeah, I can see. And it's not, <laughs> you know, these games These games are just such good examples of, of, of the quality that indie teams or small dev teams can, can offer to the industry. Yeah. Yeah, and, and with this one, I mean, it's not the same for some like Dead Cells who are constantly adding content, but that that's kind of fits the design of that game. These yeah. guys were like, we're not going to do anything else. This is the game we wanted to make. It's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fair like enough. That. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. They they had a vision, and I think they pull it off well. And, like, and like, you know, the, the point you make about perfectionism is, is a really good one. I can't stress that mm. enough because it, once you get that, I think the game becomes better. Yeah, you know, you or you at least enjoy it more because there are times when you're like, I don't want to grow rice. I want to go and fight the next <laughs> monster. But then when you get it about the journey that the character's going on, and you almost have to live it with her. You know, you can't just jump to the next level and, and be better. You you have to become better. That you know the the hard way. And I think exactly. when you get that, it really does make for a better experience. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Nice. Well, there we go. That's 10 games, 10 uh, indie games or games from small studios that give AAA games a run for their money. Fantastic stuff. Cheers, Glenn. I thought that went quite nicely, our first little podcast style. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. we should have probably mentioned that at the start. This is a completely different style of video to how we normally do them, even on our list videos, which are normally quite concise and heavily edited. We're going to just have a chat with these ones for, for uh, a period over Christmas, aren't we? Exactly right. All right. All that's left to say... <laughs> is for all things Switch all the time oh thanks to our patrons you guys are awesome for all things Switch all the time keep it Switch up cheers guys see ya it's right down my ear that was bloody hell